Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to your favorite class. Not a lot of your favorite class left. All right, it's about a week now. Do you guys know that there was like this raise your hand option in Microsoft Teams? Did I like just add that? I don't think that was there like the whole time, but you know, I'm old and don't pay attention. So maybe it was been there the whole time. I don't know. Uh, right, so you need to raise your hand. No, you can't. Usually I won't see you if you're just raising it at home. I can't, I, I don't know. I can't see you. So, you know. All right. Announcements. I posted a homework. That homework number seven is going to be due next Wednesday. It's only on woven composites. There are three questions. The first two are like qualitative, so it shouldn't take you that long. The third is kind of a workout one, but it's with classical lamination theory that you've done before. So that homework shouldn't take you too long. All right. I'm trying to chill out. I know you guys got a lot going on right now, so I'm trying to chill a little bit. All right. That's going to be due on Wednesday. Make sure you take a look at that. Uh, I did post a study guide for the final exam. Uh, we'll go through that in pretty good detail next Wednesday during lecture. Uh, so, you know, it'll be like our review day. So take a look at that. That's under the exam tab. Uh, and then finally, obviously, frankly, your final exam is next Friday, one week from today. So it's going to proceed just like the last one where you come a little early. I come a little early. You have your cameras on pointed at you while you do your work and um, and we'll do it. Uh, last exam was a little bit long, so I'm really trying to cut back on it. I'll 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 keep the the timing really in mind this time. All right. Any questions? Anyone want to raise their hand? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Well, we finished up woven composites last time, and what I got planned for the rest of the class. I mean, we only have like four lectures left. All right. It's today, next Monday, Wednesday, and then Friday's your test. So today I want to do sandwich structures. Monday we'll do sandwich structures. I'll do a little bit of time for instructor evaluations on Monday. Wednesday is going to be your review for your final, and then Friday's your final. So we don't have much time left. I know you're all broken up. Seniors going to face the world, the awful world right now. It's not the best. But I'm sure you're all going to thrive and crush it because you know how to do composites. All right, so new topic, new topic, and that is sandwich structures. All right. I had a sandwich structure for breakfast this morning. <laughs> the face sheets were bagel. The core was sausage and egg. It was delicious. All right. So uh, sandwich structures, most people have seen them. Uh, I'll bring a picture in here just to show you. And I actually have some with me. I brought them back from my office. I braved the Corona world, uh, the terrible Corona world to go get some of the sandwich panels that were in my office. Uh, here's the general idea is that you have typically and not always a very stiff face sheet and some less stiff core material. All right, so here's a good example. Uh, here's a face sheet. Uh, this might be like carbon fiber plus epoxy, for instance. Uh, and then here, they're showing a honeycomb core, which is uh, usually made out of a metallic material. Sometimes it can be uh, a foam material. Uh, but the idea there is that there's a lot of open space between those uh, little cells there, and that makes it very, very like lightweight in the core, um, but gives you additional space between uh, the face sheets on the top and the bottom. Okay, so what we're going to talk about over the next couple of lectures is like why we might want to make this. What are the drawbacks? What are the advantages? And how does it alter the previous theory that we've had uh, regards to like classical lamination theory? So the stuff we did like the first five or six weeks of the class. So what gets altered in classical lamination theory when you start to make a sandwich structure? All right, so I got some sandwich structures here. Let's put let's put the camera back to me where it belongs just kidding <laughs> all right so here's a here's a good sandwich structure so this guy here it's a little bit difficult to see but hopefully you can sort of see the over under woven pattern of the glass fiber there so this is a plain weave glass fabric and it's been infused with epoxy so this is my face sheet and i have the same on both the top and the bottom in the core here i have a, like a medium density foam and so we can sort of see like what this sandwich structure looks like. Uh, you can see like the, the the face sheets are actually like pretty thick, uh, maybe like, I don't know, uh, eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch thick, something like that. Uh, and then the core, maybe about 
I don't know, half inch, a little over half inch thick. All right, so pretty, pretty sizable. This guy was tested in three point bending, so you can kind of see the failure modes uh, on the in the face sheet there. Uh, and the core pretty well intact, a uh, little bit of like uh, failure and delamination on the bottom side there uh, on the tensile side. All right, so kind of an interesting little sandwich structure here, pretty large. Um, get an idea uh, physically for what something like this might look like. All right. So <clears throat> sandwich structures, like why would we want to use them? What are their benefits? What are their drawbacks? All right. Well, they're typically used in situations where we have the following. So good in following situations. And mostly they're used for bending applications. Okay. So obviously very lightweight. And they're even more lightweight than a typical composite itself because a lot of the space inside of the core is just like air. All right. So lower density. And typical composites. All right, so if you need to fill some space or uh, let's say you want energy absorption in the nose cone of your formula vehicle, this is a very common um, inclusion, right? All right, very lightweight. Another benefit, very high in-plane and flexural stiffness. We're going to talk about why this is, but the main reason is because you're putting all the load carrying capability at the outside of the structure. And the farther away you can get the load carrying members from the neutral axis of bending, the more benefit you're going to get. Think about like an I-beam. All right. And we're going to show mathematically how this actually works in, in about a slide or two. All right. So very high in-plane and structural stiffness, uh, better than a, a laminate alone. All right. Even though you know composites themselves are pretty good, these guys give you an extra an extra boost, baby. All right. Finally, uh, if you're using this in application, it doesn't handle shear very well at all. All right. So need low shear stresses. And we're going to talk about this in just a little bit, but basically the idea is. If you've got this sort of thick sandwich structure now where you've got face sheets on the top and a core in the middle, this is your general idea. This interface here between the face sheet and the core is very weak, usually very weak. And so if you're talking about introducing shear stresses, which may be something that looks like this, then you're going to form some shear at the interface here between the face sheet and the core, and that's like 90% of the time where these uh, foam core face sheet sandwich structure composites are going to fail. All right. So you should have an application where the shear stresses are relatively low because the interface between the core and the face sheets is typically weak. All right. So those are the applications that are best where you see high bending loads and low shear. All right. So some common face sheets. And if you want to make a sandwich structure, usually these are the high stiffness, high strength components. All right, common face sheets, uh, obviously composite laminates are common. Which is why we end up talking about these sandwich structures in this class. Uh, metals are common. And also common, uh, very dense woods. All right. There are many. All right. Uh, we're kind of given a, a quick example here. High strength, high stiffness polymers might also be uh, face sheets. So thinking like polycarbonate, ABS plastic, those are generally high-ish stiffness, high-ish strength. So those might be a face sheet that you see in application. 
things that you might see in the core. All right, so core materials. They're going to be low density, low strength, low stiffness, usually. So for us, if we're like kind of considering composites, honeycomb, which I kind of just showed a little bit above there, not the cereal, the aluminum truss structure or other non-metallic truss structure, uh, cellular foams. Do you guys even know honeycomb cereal? God damn. That's the, that, they might not even have them on the shelves anymore. All right. So cellular foams. Like I had honeycomb when I was when I was growing up. All right, honeycomb, cellular foams, lightweight woods. So like balsa is very common, uh, and then truss structures. All right, so. We could have like a, a sandwich composite where the core is a truss structure. So it might not like seem intuitive at first, but if you think of like the the hull of a canoe, okay? So there's like this truss structure that makes up the basis of like a canoe, for instance. And then what you do is you have this truss structure that makes up the hull of the boat and you lay over the top of it like either wood or some composite uh laminated material over the top and that serves as sort of like a pseudo sandwich composite all right where you got this truss structure that's like your core and then you got the face sheets which are responsible for a lot of the load carrying and the stiffness of the of the, the thing generally all right so let's take a look at some pictures because you know pictures are great so here we go this is kind of the sandwich structure i have in mind for this class something that looks like this for here we see on the surface a very thin, here this is a carbon fiber plus epoxy woven composite. This to me looks like a twill weave, two over, two under. And then in the core here, you sort of see the side on view of the honeycomb. This looks like a metallic honeycomb, probably aluminum, maybe brass. Uh, hard, to, hard to really say from that picture alone, All right? That is one example. Another example that you know I like for this particular class is uh, something that looks like this. Here, this is a little different style of core material, but here this is a glass and epoxy, and this looks woven as well. So that looks like a plain weave to me from, from a distance, though it's, it's kind of tough to tell. It looks like a pretty dense plain weave to me. Uh, and then here, this is your balsa wood core. All right, and that's, a, that's a thick core. It's a big sandwich. Hard to get your mouth around that one, all right? That's like the triple decker sandwich at, uh, at, the, at the restaurant, right? All right, now that's what they look like. And let's just do some brief math about why they're beneficial or why they're useful. And to do this, we're going to have to talk about what's known as the method of transform sections. I'm not sure if you guys talk about method of transform sections in 2004. That's your mechanics and materials one class. I know you don't talk about it in 3005 because I teach that class. Um, but I'm going to run it down really quick, the basics behind it. So this is the method of transform sections. If you have a structure that's in pure bending, and let's say that that beam is a sandwich structure. Where the modulus of the face sheets is some multiplicative value of the modulus of the core. Let's call it n times the modulus of the core. All right. 
So the stiffness of the face sheet is n times the stiffness of the core. Right? It is much, much stiffer on the face than it is in the core. Then you can go through some math to show that the following beams are mathematically equivalent when it comes to the analytics behind the beam bending. All right, the picture you should have in your head here is something that looks like this. Here's a cross section of our beam. All right, where we have some face sheet up here, some face sheet down here. All right, where we have this guy, this is our E face sheet. All right. And in the middle here, we have our core. And let's say that we're applying a bending moment to this guy in what would be like the X direction. All right, so let's apply a bending moment here uh, to this guy, double arrow, bending moment MX, we're applying to this particular guy. All right, the method of transformed sections says that if this phase sheet is N times the modulus of the core, all right, so the phase sheets are much, much stiffer than the core, then you can create an equivalent cross section where the core has been reduced by the same mul multiplicative value n in width, yet given the same stiffness. So replace core with face sheet material, but n times less width. So what that looks like then is, here are your face sheets. They're still basically the same. Face sheets are unaltered. But the core has been reduced in thickness by a width that is whatever the thickness was times n. So if we had a width here that was b, then the core, if we make it out of the same material as the face sheet, would look something like this. where this guy here is B divided by capital N, where N, again, is this relationship between the stiffness of the moduli of the two materials in the core and in the face sheet. So these two sections, if there's just a bending moment applied, are mathematically equivalent for analysis. So if you're determining, let's say, the deflection, the maximum deflection of the beam or the curvature of the beam or uh, you know, the slope of the beam at a particular location, you can use typical Eulerian beam mechanics on the section at right and the section on the left equivalently if it's only in bending, all right? So that's the idea of method of transform sections. And that's what we're trying to show here for the composite materials is typically like this is how a sandwich structure is built, right? So here's our sandwich structure. All right, and with method of transform sections, this here is now like one solid material, and it looks like I-beam. All right, you should have learned in 2004 and 3005 that I-beams, because they have a lot of material displaced from the neutral axis, if they're put into bending, they have very high bending resistance. It's called the flexural rigidity, the modulus times the uh, mass moment of inertia or area moment of inertia. Right. So these two things are equivalent, and this is the power behind the sandwich structure: is you put this core material in there, and you can still create this like solid three-dimensional structure. You don't have to, you know, make an I beam out of it, but it behaves like an I-beam because if the core is much, much stiffer, or sorry, the core is much less stiffer than the, the face sheets themselves, it sort of transforms itself into this I-beam shape, right? Now, uh, in your notes, the math behind all of this is there. Uh, I kind of go and derive it using sort of the differential calculus form, and you can sort of see what's, what's going on there. But uh, the general idea is what you see there. So you can transform the section into an I-beam, and it sort of behaves equivalently. So what this means for us is if looking at composite sandwich structures, the 
this has strong implications for, I'm going to give you an option here. A, B, or D. When we think about laminate stiffness matrices, and we think about which matrix is most responsible in the laminate stiffness matrix for bending stiffnesses of the piece, which matrix is that? Is that the A matrix, the B matrix, or the D matrix? I'll let you pause the video and think about it. I'm just kidding, this is a lot. But for those watching on YouTube, you know, pause the video. <laughs> okay, welcome back. <laughs> So if looking at a composite sandwich structure, this has strong implications for the D matrix. Those of you that said the D matrix, give yourself a pat on the back. All right. So remember the D matrix. When we calculate this for a laminate, or in this case, we're going to calculate it for a sandwich structure. We know that the calculation of the D matrix looks something like one third summation uh, from K equals one to N of Q, I, J, K times what is Z, K cubed minus Z, K minus one cubed. All right, that's our general equation. The idea here is that we're maximizing the D matrix to give you maximum stiffness of this particular laminate by maximizing those particular values there. All right, so if we're farther away from the neutral axis, we're increasing the values associated with this geometric constant on the right-hand side, all right? So if you're very close to the neutral axis, you're at a distance of like one, you're gonna have like one cubed minus zero cubed, all right? The value there is very, very small. But if you're at a distance of 10 away from the neutral axis, you're gonna have something like 10 cubed minus nine cubed. All right, so that's like a thousand minus uh, 800 something. All right, so uh, very, very powerful. And I wanna show an example with actual numbers of, of what this might look like. All right, so. All right, so let's consider this example quickly. All right. <clears throat> how, how can I do this? I'm going to make this work. Hold on. All right, so this comes from the slides. You get the idea here. You want to compare the laminate stiffness matrix of the following two composites. The first is just a regular old laminate like what we've been talking about before. Zero, negative 45, 45, 90 symmetric carbon epoxy laminate with a laminate thickness of T per layer. All right, so what you should have in your mind here is a laminate sort of blowing this up that has eight layers zero negative 45 45 90 all right so cut that in half cut that in half and cut each one of these in half all right so this is your laminate where you have like this zero negative 45 45 90 symmetric about the midplane all right so here the total thickness would be 8t since each layer is t thick and each one of the layers has this particular lamina stiffness matrix Q. All right, so that's your stiffness of each individual layer in principal coordinates. All right, you want to compare that to a sandwich structure with a polyurethane foam core and carbon epoxy face sheets with a very similar construction. Here you've got a face sheet that's zero, negative 45, 90. Then you have a bunch of foam and then negative and then 90, 45, negative 45, zero. All right, so what you should have in your mind here for this picture is something like this. 
All right, this is now your cross section. We've got the laminates on the top and the bottom, and each one of these has four layers. So there's your laminate on the top and the bottom. And then you've got the foam here in the middle. So this is four layers. This is four layers. All right, so these are the pictures that you should have in your head. This guy has a thickness of 8T. We're told in this situation that the polyurethane foam has 30T in thickness. All right, so this guy has a total thickness of 30 plus 8 or 38T. All right, so much, much thicker because of that foam inclusion, right? So here this is 30 times T. All right, so we've got a very thick foam there in the middle. And you're given additional information about what's going on with the foam properties and the properties of the foam given here. Well, you'll notice MPA, the foam, very, very, very low stiffness compared to the face sheets, which are measured here in, in GPA. All right, so the stiffness of the face sheets relative to the foam, like an order of magnitude different, more than an order of magnitude different, because this is 140 and this is 40. Yikes. So it's like four orders of magnitude difference. And that's, you know, pretty good approximation. <clears throat> All right, so what happens? Let's look at what happens like with each one of the individual stiffness matrices. So let's calculate what will be A, B, and D, and compare. All right. So let's take a look. Here's what you should, again, sort of have like in your mind for this particular picture. And I made this on the slide so that you can sort of Gandret about what it looks like. And here's the big difference. And what I want to draw your attention to is that when you're going through what would be like the ZK matrix or the ZK vector to determine where each one of those lamina is located in the sandwich structure, well, each lamina, when it's just a normal stack on top of each other, is located at like a distance of T or 2T or 3T away from the midplane. Okay, so here's my midplane, and we know that each one of these, like ZK, is defined by these general distances to each one of the lamina, all right? So your ZK vector looks something like this, very simple to understand. Each of the lamina is the distance of T away from the previous, all right? We have a much, much different Z vector when it comes to sandwich structures because we have this big-ass foam that's just kind of hanging out in the middle. And so from the middle to even where the first face sheet begins is 15T, right? It's half the thickness of the total thickness of the foam layer, right? So our ZK vector looks significantly different for the sandwich structure than it does for a typical laminated material. So when you go later to something like ZK cubed minus ZK minus one cubed, here we're gonna have something like 19T cubed minus 18 T cubed. That's a lot different than what you would have in this other situation where it's like 4 T cubed minus 3 T cubed. Okay, these are significantly different and are going to make huge impacts on the D matrix and we're going to show that in just a second. But that's the general idea is that these guys have significantly different Z vectors which affect their mechanical performance when it comes to calculating A, B, and D. All right. So uh, for a traditional laminate uh, and for a sandwich structure, here are your calculations. And I'm just going to put these up here, uh, and we'll just uh, we'll just talk about them. It's like lose track of my mouse pointer. What the hell? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm making this work. All right, here we go. All right, so your traditional laminate here, this is your general formula, because you only have eight layers, so K is one to eight. 
And what you'll calculate is this ZK minus ZK minus one is always going to be equal to T, the thickness of the laminate. So we pull that out directly. It just comes right to the front here as little T. Then we have contributions from each one of the individual layers, something like Q IJ zero, 45, negative 45, 90. And we have two of each one of those different layers. So two zero contributions, two 45, two negative 45, and two 90 contributions. So this is generally what your A matrix calculation would look like for your traditional laminate, right? Now with the sandwich structure, you'd have a very similar idea. And ZK minus ZK minus one, even between the layers up here, is still equal to T, right? So ZK, ZK minus one is still equal to T. So the laminate contribution is still the same. All right, this contribution here is still the same as this contribution. And that's because the higher order Z terms have not yet appeared, right? Now with the A matrix, you also have an additional contribution of the foam. Right, so the foam here like has this thickness of 30 T. And so it will contribute some amount, which is like 30 T times the stiffness of the foam at the center. But generally this is like very small because we know the stiffness of the foam is, you know, four orders of magnitude less than the stiffness of the face sheets. So you can basically neglect it. And the takeaway is that for sandwich structure, the A matrix is basically the same as the A matrix of whatever the phase sheets are. So if we were to compare a traditional laminate to a sandwich structure, the A matrix are about the same. All right, what does this mean physically? This means that if I load a sandwich structure in tension, or if I load a laminate, a thin laminate in tension, they'll respond in approximately the same way, meaning they'll strain in approximately the same fashion. All right. So remember, the A matrix relates applied tensile and compressive loads to longitudinal and compressive strains. All right. So whether I load a thin laminate <coughs> made of these face sheets or a sandwich structure made with the same face sheets in tension, it's going to deflect or, or behave longitudinally in, in much the same way. And that's because like you're adding this foam layer that doesn't really give any additional like longitudinal strength or stiffness. It's just there to give you that bending stiffness, which you haven't even really gotten to yet. So that's kind of the takeaway there is that the A matrix will more or less be the same between this laminate and the sandwich structure. All right. V matrix. All right, well, uh, that's easy. We know that symmetric materials uh, have no B matrix. So ready for your B matrix analysis? There it is. All right. The B matrix for the laminate and the B matrix for the sandwich structure, both the same and equal to zero. All right, well, that was easy. So easy, a caveman could do it. or you just press the easy button, like they have in Staples. Easy button. All right, now the fun one, the D matrix. So let's get this picture back in here and we'll just get the math uh, that I've already pre-done for you. And you have, no, you have no idea how long it took me to put all that math on that slide. Goddamn, it took forever. <clears throat> I'd say like 50% of my time just goes to like making notes. Like I'm not even joking about that. Think about how long it takes you to like make a PowerPoint presentation like for one of your classes, all right? I make 25 slides, 30 slides per class per week, all right? So I basically have to make like two PowerPoint presentations, three PowerPoint presentations per week worth of notes. Ugh. All right, well, boo hoo, boo me. That's professor life. All right, so let's look at the D matrix. Again, similar idea. We have this Z vector and the ZK vector here, which are significantly different. And now we're about to see the power, the power of the foam core in the sandwich structure and how it can affect your bending stiffness. All right, so for your traditional laminate here, general equation looks like this. And now we're gonna bring in the cubic values of their locations away from the neutral axis. All 
right? So remember that is like these distances here. And now we're about to cube those values. So here we see like a negative 3t cubed minus negative 4t cubed. That is for like these two values, which are representing this bottom layer of uh, the laminate stack. All right, so that's the contribution there. Right? What you'll find is this general outcome is that you'll be able to pull the t cubed out and you can look at the coefficients leading in front of each one of these contributing stiffnesses. So we see here that we have good contributions from the zero degree layers because they're farthest away from the center of the stack. So remember here are my zero layers, right? Zero, zero, farthest away from the center stack. And my 90 layers are right in the middle. So 90 degree layers right in the middle. The closer you are to the center of the stack, the less contribution you will have to the bending stiffness of the laminate. And we see that represented by the coefficients here. So here we see a two in front of this 90 and a 74 in front of the zero. So the outer layers, the zero layers are contributing significantly more to the overall D matrix or the overall bending stiffness of this laminate than the 90 degree matrices are or the 90 degree layers are. Well, that just makes sense, all right? They're farther away from the midplane. Now, if we push them out even farther by incorporating the foam structure, let's see what effect that has, all right? So here's the resulting calculations for the D matrix for what would be the foam structure. And so here now you see the power. Right? When we look at this term of like ZK cubed minus ZK minus one cubed, and we talk about like this bottom layer here, well, the ZK values that you're going to take in are something like negative 18T and negative 19T. All right. So when we square negative 18T, or sorry, cube minus negative 19T cubed, we'll again have this T cubed term that we can pull out. And we'll see that the contributions now are going to be significantly more. And so see here now the coefficients that lead the zero degree layer are like 2000. And the coefficient that leads the 90 degree layer is like 144. That's different than the coefficients that used to lead, which were like 74 and 2. So the contributions to the outer layers now, here is the order of like 2054 for a coefficient in front of this particular layer. This guy, a coefficient of 74. So you're talking, I don't know, I can't do that math fast enough in my head, but like 25 times the contribution, roughly. All right. A lot. Right, just by incorporating the sandwich structure. Right, so there's the power, and there are the coefficients. Uh, the foam contribution is here, but again, this is like four orders lower. So neglect. Right, and the big takeaway then is that uh, D for the sandwich structure is going to be much, much greater than the D matrix for the laminate. And that's because of the distance away from the neutral axis that these foam core sheets, or sorry, that the face sheets uh, are now located. All right, so some numbers, actual values. Here we go. So if you just let T stand for some value here, it's 0.4 millimeters, then this is what you get back. All right, we see the A matrix as we prescribed before. Here's your traditional laminate, eight layers in the symmetric orientation. Compare that to that of the sandwich structure, more or less the same, all right? So here it's like 1870. 75, the year I was born, and 1870, the year that my brother was born. 0 0.0574, 0 0.0576. Relatively like small differences in their contributions. All right. B matrix, zero. Obviously, both are symmetric still. And here now, the D matrix. This is really the big takeaway, is that here you see something like 1 times 10 to the negative sixth. All right. So here, 0 0.2687. So this guy is 0 0.9562, but is one order of magnitude greater. So the general difference between the laminate and the sandwich structure matrix is about 35 times. 
So if you kind of like go through the calculations and you look at each one of those individual IJ entries, it's about a 35 times difference between the two. So you can increase the bending stiffness of your structure just by adding this foam core layer relatively uh, trivially. Okay, so there's a little bit of math. It's about all the math that we're going to do for this portion of the class. And now if you look at common sandwich structures, and you kind of like keep this idea in mind that the only real benefit that you get out of a sandwich structure is the increase in the bending stiffness. You end up with this. All right, so here are some common sandwich structures. And you got to think about in your mind, like, what is the sandwich structure here? Okay, so for like the corrugated cardboard, you've got like this truss structure on the inside of the corrugation, right? It's like inside of the face sheets, which are the cardboard, All right? This guy is like used to resist like bending when you're moving the packages around, All right? You've got this IKEA furniture here. So we're talking about like what most of your desks are made out of. It's like what my desk is made out of because I'm cheap and I buy IKEA furniture. Uh, is that you have these veneers that are like generally a little bit stronger than this cheap foam particle board, whatever that they put in the middle there. All right. So if you bust open some IKEA furniture and you take a look at what's going on, it's like the sandwich structure. And that's because most of the loading that you put on a desk, if I'm like leaning over it, is this bending loading. Okay. It's like this bending moment that I have when I'm like leaning over my desk. All right. Here's a skateboard. Obviously we can see like this guy is in some sort of like four point bend configuration, some offset four point bend configuration. So this is like a bending structure. And we've got this truss on the inside with the face sheets on, on the top and the bottom that are helping to resist this bending moment. Imagine if that like truss structure here that you see inside of the skateboard wasn't there, how much that thing would be like deflecting uh, relative to like what it's deflecting now be like quite a bit more. Uh, here are some prefab architectural panels. This is a metal or like a, I'm not sure if it's a metal, but maybe like a, a heavy fiberglass face sheet and then like very thin, airy insulation foam. All right. So these are prefab architectural panels serving the same purpose. All right. You have these structural pieces that are far away from the neutral axis of bending. This is a very noticeable sandwich structure. All right. This is kind of a cool application here. This guy who made this, this surfboard. It's got like this ISO grid truss structure on the inside. It looks kind of like honeycomb. Um, that's useful because it's supporting a lot of the bending loads that you might see in surfing. And not a lot of shear there. Uh, maybe if you have a lot of deflection, but uh, not a ton. But the general idea is that the bending mode is most prevalent with these sort of sandwich structures. And so you got this face sheet, which is this translucent material on the outside and, and the honeycomb structure on the inside that's that's helping you to increase the thickness overall and and use the outer face sheets to resist the bending moment that you might get from standing on a surfboard okay so uh yeah that's the idea uh, that's about all I wanted to get through today. I wanted to make sure to just kind of cover the base, basic math topics. And then on Monday, we will discuss manufacturer sandwich structures and how we might modify our lamination theory that we've talked about to uh, do calculations with sandwich structures. So that's it for today. Make sure you take a look at the homework, which we do next Wednesday. Take a look at the exam study guide, all that stuff. And we'll uh, we'll see you on Monday. No one raised their hand.